Well, first of all, thank you all. And uh, probably is the last day that I'm going to see you after tomorrow. And then we all go on holiday. Just a quick reflection. I think um, it's been a long journey again and a, a very challenging one this season. But I think that uh, we have come a long way as a club. Um, and as a team, I think we have transformed the energy, the vibe, and the expectation of this football club again. And we've done together, showing incredible unity between the staff, the players, everybody involved at the club, and especially with, with our people, which has been incredibly supportive throughout the season, especially in difficult moments. And now I can sense that they have the hope and the expectations to move this club to the, to the place that it deserves. We've done it the way we predicted with the project that we set a year ago, with a lot of young players, with the senior players helping, and with our crowds again in our stadium, and with a real sense of connections around the place. So we are back in Europe. Um, we don't know where. Tomorrow it will, be, it will be decided. Hopefully it will be Champions League, because I believe that tomorrow we're going to do what we have to do, and we are going to be cheering for Norwich to do what they, they can do, for sure. And after that, we want to take to the club to the next level, and that's the ambition. In order to do that, we have a very clear plan again, how we want to do it and execute it. And it's all no secrets. We need resources and we need to increase the quality and the depth of the squad as long as the same way maintain who we are as a club and um, and the people that we have next to us. And, uh, and that's going to be the challenge the following season. But uh, hopefully tomorrow in front of our people, we can live uh, another great day. So I leave it up to you guys. Paul. Mikael, how do you rate the chances of... Arsenal and Norwich victories this weekend? Very possible. And uh, looking back, I be, I've been back a few years and see a few examples of teams that they played in the last season and things that happened. And uh, the closer the game is, I am more hopeful. Listening to you speak there, obviously Arsenal have finished eighth in the last two seasons, so fifth place, if it does come to that, would be obvious progress. Is that the way you're saying it? And do you think the fact that you were six or seven points ahead, okay. sort of clear of fifth place at one stage. Is that where the negativity is coming from? And, and how do you think it, it happened from that situation? It's because we have created expectations um, that this club deserves and this club has to be. And in the last two matches, we haven't been able to fulfill those expectations. But overall, looking back where we were, um, you have to be clear as well with what we have to do but very clear that this is not where we want to be. That we want to be in a completely different position, challenging really for the top teams, and that that's the aim, and that this is not going to stop here. That is another step, that it was very necessary, because it wasn't only about where we are in the league table. We have much deeper issues at the club than the league table, in my opinion, that now they have been resolved, that now they look very, very strong, and that we have the real uh, strong foundations now to build what we want to do. What kind of a response was there from you and the players to the, the comments from Granit Xhaka after the Newcastle game, his, his honest comments after that match? What we do in the dressing room, we don't comment it, but uh, the moment you allow a, a person to be in, in front of a microphone is to express what their feelings are. And uh, Granit is someone that's in, in front of the microphone, in front of your eyes and uh, in your face, so it's nothing different. You mentioned resources there at the start. How confident are you you will get the resources needed to turn Arsenal in to that? We, we are going to have certain resources, no limited resources, certain resources. And with the resources, we have to play and uh, and do what we have to do in the best possible way. Uh, we don't know what the rest they're going to have in terms of resources, which I'm assuming that um, obviously is going to be challenging because now it's not a top three or a top four league. Now it's a top eight or ten teams that are involved there. But uh, that's why we have to find the way um, to do again what we did uh, last summer. From a coach's perspective, how far away do you feel the team is from challenging Champions League on a regular basis? Then I go back to what the league table is saying. And the league table doesn't lie after 38 games. And the league table says that we are very far still about <clears throat> the first and second position, uh, not only in points, but in goal difference. Um, and that's the level that uh, we have to try to aim and, and reach. The young Brazilian winger Marquinhos is reportedly in London to finalise a move to Arsenal. Can you tell us anything about that? Is, is that as advanced? 
No, when when there is a player to announce um, in the next few weeks, we will be dealing with that. And Mark is in charge of that, so you can ask him the question. He's here next to me. And just a final one. Um, away from this game, Patrick Vieira w was obviously in the headlines last night. And mm. Another pitch invasion incident, the same at Port Vale, the same with Billy Sharp, uh, the Sheffield United player. Have you got a view on what it's going to take to, to stop that and how worried do you think managers and players are about that? that? We have to stop it um, and we have to minimise the risk and the exposure of players and staff in this situation because you cannot control it. And when you cannot control a situation and, and there is so many people involved in, in any uh, event, then it uh, becomes dangerous and, um, and we have to do something about it. Hi, Mikel. Um, Hi. If it is to be fifth place, can you tell, take some satisfaction from the improvement in the league position, even though there'll be disappointment if it's not fourth? Well, I, probably tomorrow I can answer the question better, uh, because today I'm focusing on winning the match and, uh, and hoping that we can still achieve the Champions League. If it was to be fifth, do you think fans maybe need a bit of perspective, though disappointment that you're not in the Champions League, but there has been improvement? We tried to explain things and we did try to explain things last year and what we were going to expect. Uh, and I think it's very clear and obvious. We are not where we should be um, as a club because this club's history tells us to be the best in this country and we are not there. But we have to get there somehow, you know, and that needs a journey and that needs certain amount of time and windows. If you are not able to do in one window, what you want to do in four? And, uh, and that takes time. And one of the things you've spoken about being happy with is the development of the club, especially the young players that have come through. Everybody, the development of the culture of the club, the development of the people, <laughs> and um, and how they live uh, their profession and the club, uh, the connection we have everybody inside the organization, players with the staff, with ownership, with board, and obviously what is unquestionable is what do you see and the atmo atmosphere that we play at home and away with our fans, which the people has been here for 10 years, said uh, that they haven't lived that uh, connection um, in that period. So I think that's something to be extremely proud as well. And that's credit to everybody involved at the club. Looking at Everton, what did you make of their turnaround against Palace last night? I was watching it yesterday and that gives me more encouraging about what can happen in the last day at Norwich because it's, this happens only in, in this league and this is what it makes this league uh, such an incredible league uh, because in many other countries when there is nothing to play for you don't see that type of performances so we are hoping that uh, something special can happen. The pressure will be off Everton now, is that a good thing or a bad thing for you going into Sunday do you think? Well, playing the last game uh, against a team that can be relegated, obviously, mentally is, is very tough because you know the consequences. You are a professional, but they are your colleagues and and nobody wants to be in that position. So, yeah, you get a little bit of relief in that sense. And just finally from me, what did you learn from the defeat at Everton earlier on this season when they came from behind in that one, obviously? Well, what different things that you learn in, in every football match that you learn. It was obviously a match that... Uh, that we had in, in some control in some phases, that we lost control. Obviously, we know where we did it, we analysed it, and tomorrow hopefully is different. Thanks, Mikel. Thank you. James? Mikel, um, Granite suggested in that interview, and I'm sorry for the language here, but he said that some of his teammates didn't have the balls to play for Arsenal. Is, is that accurate? Well, you have to ask the question to him exactly what he meant or, or who. Uh, was pointing at uh, the comments are are clear, uh, and then it's down to okay, who is directed to if he's somebody, or if himself. Did he overstep the mark in that interview? I prefer today not to comment too much on that. Uh, but when you allow people to speak in front of the media, you have to allow them to to say what they feel, and uh, unquestionably, and knowing granted, that's what he felt. Is that something that you've talked to him about since Monday? We always talk. And, and just finally, um, for me, just looking ahead to the summer in general, City have bought Haaland, United are going to have a new manager, Chelsea are probably going to have a new owner, Conte apparently wants six players at Spurs. H how competitive is this transfer market going to be in general? I think the league has never been that competitive. So the numbers that you could produce six years ago in this league today, you are out of Europe. It's as simple as that. Um, so we know that, and uh, 
the plan that we have is in order to be able to compete with with these teams uh, but we don't know which resources all the teams they have to be we know that all the teams are already starting from a different position because they are in a different moment but uh, but we still need to have the aim to do that because if you don't where do you end up just looking back i don't want to do that so we will need to find ways to to be able to compete with them like we have done this season because nobody expected us to do or with the squad that we had the expectation that uh, that we had you spent i think 140 million last summer could, could, have you got the resources to spend a similar amount this summer? it's not only about that amount if you see the the wages that we have and and we <coughs> had is night and day so it's not about what you're spending it's about what you have sold what you have that we had 28 players and then we end up with 19 players in the squad. So it's about the total overall <coughs> expenditure because that figure, if not, is completely irrelevant because what is the total annual cost of, of the squad that you are building? Thank you. Paul? Yeah. Sorry, Mikhail, just one more. Uh, Gary Lineker has, has tweeted that he's hearing there's a food poisoning outbreak at Tottenham <laughs> and that, that he's not joking. I just wonder if you have any thoughts on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about it. it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have no clue. What can I comment? Charles. Hi, Mikhail. There's obviously been a lot of sort of focus on what Arsenal did or didn't do in the January transfer window since Monday. Do you look back on that now and think you maybe got it wrong, the approach to the January window, in terms of pushing the club on for a top four spot? No. Does what you didn't do in January put you in a much stronger position for this summer when it comes to that? Everything that we did, it was uh, trying to reach uh, the objective that we had after January, where it was to try to be challenging that top four and what was the, the way that we were going to do it and financially be stable and be in a position that come in January or come in the summer, we could allow ourselves to do certain things and don't be completely locked. But would you have wanted to do something in January? Did you try and with yeah, if you give me six players, I go in the transfer market and I, you bring me these six players. Uh, in the summer as well, if we can do that and have 25 players to select the best three strikers in the world, bring them here. I will coach them. I will be so happy to coach them. One last one. Hi, Mikhail. Um, I know you mentioned at the start the foundations in terms of like style of play and everyone's kind of seen that grow throughout the season. One trend, I guess, has been sometimes when that control has been disrupted early on. It takes a while to kind of respond to that. I was wondering, is that an experience thing or something else in terms of coming up with solutions? It can be a, a lot of factors. Uh, and it's how we deal with, with moments when we lose that control and we are able to reset and take the game into the direction that, that we want and uh, finding different ways in order to do that. Um, it's down to that. Is that about the leadership of, of the team. It's about the understanding of certain situations in the game, not to continue to put the game into into that um, that mood, I would say, um, and we're always working on it. Is that so? That mood would it be like more emotional decisions coming into play, or would it be? Um... Sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes it's about um, the structure. Sometimes about the first pass that we pick to make to provoke certain things. Sometimes about in which territory we want to play the next five minutes, and and it's more related to game management. Is um, it's for different reasons. It's really difficult to pick just uh, a thing. Thanks, Art. That's the end of the broadcast section.